uh, this idea of selecting uh, uh, taxes for an African slippery was one of the idea that uh, there's an organization in Africa for human health and heredity. They're currently designing a slippery specific to the African continent. Uh, and one of the hurdles that you need to pass to do that is obviously to select uh, some tax snips to go on the DRA. Uh, and existing methods, they're really not that memory efficient. Um, so we decided to embark on, on that journey. Uh, the, um, the data sets that we use are from uh, five uh, African uh, populations across the, across the continent without the key data. Um, and the problem. Uh, uh, in Africa is that uh, the LD structure is widely different from, say, European and Asian populations. Uh, the European populations are much faster. Um, uh, and that's why we wanted to generate a, a continent-specific yeah, slippery. Um, and uh, what we also were interested in was how many tax snips we actually had to put on the array to uh, do an accurate imputation of uh, SNPs in, in various African, African populations. Uh, so now I'll walk you through uh, how our workflow works. Um, so it starts by intaking uh, genotypes in the form of a BCF file. Um, it also takes some metadata, your uh, individual IDs and your population IDs. Um, and then uh, it goes about splitting up the files by population and chromosome for you. Um, it can also intake split files if that's the way your data is. Um, then it calculates uh, linkage disequilibrium between each SNP pair um, within each of your populations of interest using Flink. Um, it also calculates minor and middle frequencies. Um, our pipeline also gives you the ability to provide a blacklist, so a list of SNPs that you don't want on your array for whatever reason. Um, and then it uh, takes those uh, LD and minor low frequency uh, values and puts it into our uh, algorithm, which someone else yeah. has. So uh, just quickly, uh, the, the mandatory input obviously is, is, is the LD values. Um, we also uh, uh, make the algorithm accept the, the set of pre-selected tax and the set of extensions to ignore. We didn't have time to do uh, uh, score, uh, SNP scores as an input. And there's a set of, uh, of input variables. Uh, what it does is that it just counts the pairwise LEs uh, uh, for the SNPs. And then uh, what we do is uh, we add in the uh, pre select attack SNPs, uh, uh, update uh, the counts accordingly. And then uh, we start the iterations by choosing uh, with the SNP which is most informative, which is an LE with the most other SNPs. Uh, and once we choose it, we reduce the, the, the count of the, um, of the tagging and the tag SNPs, and we continue that loop uh, until either we run out of candidate SNPs or we reach uh, whatever threshold uh, we decided on. So just to go through the algorithm really quickly with the toy data set, uh, just to orient ourselves that along the top there's a section of a chromosome with a series of SNPs. So the first step is to consult the blacklist uh, and remove any SNPs um, that we don't want to consider just to save time and computational resources. And also remove any SNPs that have low minor allele frequencies. Um, so the, uh, this matrix here is a matrix of LD values that are calculated with Blink. Uh, the user can set a threshold LD value. Generally it's set at 0.8. So uh, we, we assign for each SNP a count of how many other nearby SNPs it's able to, to capture in high linkage disequilibrium. And then the SNP that has the highest count in each region is selected as a tag SNP. Uh, we then uh, remove the tag SNP and its captured SNPs uh, from, from the set, add the tag SNP to a list, and uh, iterate iteratively go back and uh, recompute the, the LD counts. Uh, so we used that algorithm and uh, evaluated the, the imputation scores. I think Ethan's going to take us through that. Hey. Uh, so this is just quickly how we made the test data set. Uh, it's quite difficult to find publicly available data to 
um, is this that 1,000 genomes we use. So that first is uh, basically the 1,000 genomes reference data that gets used for MPU2. Um, we split out the target population that we're going to use for the imputation. Um, then with that full data set, pull out just the tag snips that we've selected. So in other words, this little green, um, little block with green lines is, is our virtual chip. Um, then basically run impute on that, and then compare the computer data to the real results. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up now. So uh, you just see that uh, it's a bit biased because there's four West African populations. So as, uh, as we expect, the uh, East African population, the way LWK uh, performs a bit poorly. Uh, and this, uh, this slide shows uh, for a different number of tax snips how the imputation accuracy improves. And from some 20, which we ran it on, is, uh, is approximately 2% of the genome. So if you multiply, Say the 20,000 by, uh, by 50, you end up with a million taxes, and you can see that actually a million taxes is sufficient to accurately capture common variation in, in Africa.